have a fine trip. Be sure to let me know if there's anything more I can do for you. I don't know what it could be. You've answered just about every question we could think of. Thanks very much, Mr. Burton. You've been a big help. It's been a pleasure. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Hello. My name is Tom Burton, and I'm a ticket agent for the Milwaukee Row. The folks who just left asked me to help them plan a vacation in the Pacific Northwest. It's something I have done for thousands in the past, that I'd like to do for you next vacation. I'm sure you would find it the most delightful trip you've ever had. Suppose we take a motion picture tour of some of the highlights of Yellowstone Park, Montana, and Washington, and of the scenic route of the Milwaukee Road Super Speed Olympian Hiawatha. Just settle back in your chairs and I'll be the guide. Shall we start? The Chicago River and the famous Merchandise Mart, the world's largest office building, are in view as the Olympian Hiawatha leaves Union Station on its journey to the Northwest. If you got aboard just before departure, you will probably want to spend a few minutes getting settled in your space. But don't be too long about it. Like this couple, you'll be eager to go up into the Superdome for a look around. Running the full length of the car, the Superdome, where everyone is welcome, has comfortable seats for 68. With curving three by five foot windows of tinted heat absorbing glass, the dome offers full circle views of the countryside that add immeasurably to the enjoyment of your trip. From this delightful vantage point, you see the lovely lakes and rich dairy lands of Northern Illinois and Southern Wisconsin. Chances are you'll get out a camera for some on-the-fly portraits of the Midwest. In a surprisingly short time, your train has reached the famous dells of the Wisconsin River, where the scenery and picturesque Indian ceremonials have delighted millions of visitors. The Olympian Hiawatha doesn't stop here, but let's take a moment anyhow for a look around. I am your own, your Hiawatha friend. My heart is yours, you know. Dear one, I love you so. For many ha-ha gentle may decide, decide and say you'll be my Indian bride. Just ride the Hiawatha or the trail Through wooded hills and dales The smoothest thing on rails We'll get you there on time This train sublime The brand new Hiawatha's mighty fine Cross, the route lies along the Mississippi, the great waterway used by La Salle, Hennepin, Joliet, and Marquette, by the fur traders and keelboat men. Just as beautiful today, with its wide valley flanked by towering palisades, the river is a delight to fishermen, hunters, and sightseers. From St. Paul, capital of Minnesota, the Milwaukee Road crosses the Father of Waters on the high Short Line Bridge and enters the twin city of Minneapolis. And 
Now, let's take time for a look inside the Olympian Hiawatha. The spacious 40-seat coaches are as comfortable as they are attractive, and all seats are reserved. The fluorescent lighting is restfully free from glare. Overhead racks provide plenty of space for luggage, and there are big, perfectly appointed lounge dressing rooms for men and for women. The scientifically contoured chairs are padded with soft foam rubber. If you want to enjoy a daytime nap or a quiet night's sleep, just flip up the full-length leg rest, lower the back of the chair, stretch out, and relax. Open section Turalux cars like this were built especially for transcontinental service on the Olympian Hiawatha. Bright and cheerfully decorated, they offer berth comfort and privacy at lower space cost and rail fare than in standard Pullman sleepers. The Milwaukee is the only United States railroad offering this economical type of accommodation. The charming cafe lounge on the lower deck of the Super Dome car is a delightful spot for getting acquainted with fellow passengers. The decorative scheme is a happy blending of modern styles with traditional Indian motifs. Colors are soft and warm, and the atmosphere informal. There are tables and booths for parties of two, four, and five people. Throughout the day and evening, you can chat, smoke, and listen to the radio in the cafe lounge while you enjoy a beverage, a snack, or a light meal. Here is the place to satisfy that hearty traveler's appetite. The markets of all America contribute to the varied a la carte and table d'hote menus. And the beauty of the big diner adds to your enjoyment of famous Milwaukee Road meals. Double bedrooms have just about everything. Individual air conditioning controls, closed closet, running ice water, enclosed lavatory. Adjoining bedrooms connect by day to form suites for family parties or friends traveling together. The big, roomy berths have reading lights and soft foam rubber mattresses. A roomette, costing little more than a lower berth, offers the comfort and privacy of a bedroom in more compact form for those who travel alone. A big armchair with a wide window by day, a soft bed at night. The Skytop Lounge, glass enclosed for trackside to mountaintop scenic views, is another unique feature of the Olympian Hiawatha. There are comfortable chairs and sofas, a card table nook, and a library of current magazines. The special tinted glass filters glare and heat from the direct rays of the sun. There's nothing like this on any other railroad. Before going on west, let's refresh ourselves on the route of the Superdome Olympian Hiawatha. From the Twin Cities, we cross the Missouri at Mobridge, pass through Miles City, Montana, three forks near the Gallatin Gateway to Yellowstone Park, Butte, Missoula, Spokane, Washington, then across the Cascades to Seattle and Tacoma. Cut through the granite crest of the Big Belt Mountains, rugged Montana Canyon is a spectacular and memorable introduction to the Rocky Mountain Wonderland. This is near the eastern end of the Milwaukee Road's first electrified zone which extends from Hollowton, Montana to Avery, Idaho. All Milwaukee Road trains, both passenger and freight, have modern diesel or electric power. From your comfortable chair in the Superdome, you look down at 16 Mile Creek as it twists from side to side in the canyon. Look up at towering crags and cliffs. Perhaps you'll see an eagle circling in the sky, some deer feeding in a side valley, or a bear calmly watching the train. You're right in the middle of the scene in the glass-encircled dome. 
Presently, you ride along the Missouri River as you approach Three Forks, Montana, where the Gallatin, Madison, and Jefferson unite to form this great waterway of pioneer times. Three Forks is the Milwaukee's gateway to Yellowstone National Park. With almost clock-like regularity, Old Faithful shoots its 120-foot plume of boiling water into the sky. Here it is, the world's most famous and most photographed geyser. There is Riverside Geyser that plays its jet at an angle into the Firehole River. Near Old Faithful are a dozen or more hot springs, many of them tinted the most delicate shades of blue by living algae and minerals in the clear waters. There's literally a picture at every turn in the Firehole Geyser Basin. Trout? You bet. The rivers of Yellowstone are loaded with hard fighting beauties. You may see a band of elk, buffalo, deer, and beaver, perhaps antelope and mountain goats. The bears, of course, are famous. This one either smelled some food in the bus or thought he'd take a ride to another part of the park. But it seems that he forgot his ticket and was told politely to leave. Yellowstone Lake, more than 7,700 feet above sea level, is ringed with blue mountains. It's fine for boating and fishing, as you can see from this nice string of trout. If you want to try a different kind of exciting sport, put on your swimming suit and go out on a fast boat like this to indulge in some water skiing. Nice scenery around here. Skiing is not quite as easy as this girl makes it appear, so don't blame us if you have a spill. Both together now and up she comes. That's landing of beauty. Next stop is the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. A third of a mile wide and more than a thousand feet deep, its rock walls are delicately tinted with buff, pink, and red-brown. Near the head of the canyon, the river roars over the upper falls, and then over the 308-foot drop of the Great Falls. Not so impressive in size, but with a delicate beauty of its own, Tower Falls drops over a cliff of tawny rock. And now we leave Yellowstone for a side trip to Lewis and Clark Cavern, high up in the Tobacco Root Mountains. From the parking space of the administration building, you step aboard this Jeep railway for a ride to the cave exit. There, you board a cable-drawn funicular for a climb that is much steeper than it looks here, some 500 feet up to the entrance of this beautiful cavern. Parties are guided through the electrically lighted cave and exit at the lower level after traversing passageways connecting half a dozen major rooms filled with marvelous rock formations. It's worth the ride up here just for the view of the Jefferson Valley spread below you. Another trip might take you to Virginia City, a mining ghost town that looks much as it did a hundred years ago. There's the original Sloan, a Western Museum, a vigilante headquarters, and the old stagecoach to lend color. Makes good pictures, too.
Maybe you'd like to walk down to Alder Gulch and try your hand at panning gold, as this young couple did. Not many nuggets are left, but there is still yellow dust in the sandy gravel. There are plenty of dude ranches through Montana and in Washington. Visitors from all over the nation fish, swim, learn rope tricks, but mostly ride, for life centers around the corral. Get back aboard the Superdome Olympian Hiawatha as it leaves Three Forks and continue our trip westward. The right of way lies to the lovely canyon of the Jefferson River with its high rocky walls slashed with pines. From your seat in the dome, you'll have a perfect view of the canyon and the stream with its ripples and quiet pools. We're going upstream now as the rails rise in a long, steady climb to the continental divide of the Rockies, backbone of the continent. Swinging down the west slope, we soon reach the station at Butte, the richest hill on earth. Beginning as a gold camp, Butte became a great copper producer and has 2,700 miles of underground workings, a whole city under a city. Miners enter the skip for a fast ride down to the job. Move forward in the car, please. Plenty of room up front. New and highly efficient methods are being adopted to mine the abundant low-grade ores. The economical block cave system now coming into use will ultimately level many of Butte's hills. Early in the morning, the Olympian Hiawatha passes Bonner Junction. This is still in the Rocky Mountain Zone, where the Milwaukee is electrified for 440 miles. Soon, we are at Missoula, metropolis of the great Bitterroot and Grass Valleys. Missoula is also the home of the University of Montana, with its beautiful campus lying not far from the center of town. Spectacular curves and switchbacks carry the Milwaukee Road in a remarkable engineering achievement through the Bitterroot Mountains on the Montana-Idaho border. Here, a mile-long freight enters our view on the left and circles back around the head of the valley. Now, the locomotive of the same train appears on the right after winding through two tunnels. Spokane 
Eastern Washington is capital of the vast Inland Empire, where plentiful electric power has recently added many industries to its agricultural wealth. Picturesque Spokane Falls is right in the heart of town. The city is proud of its lovely parks. This one, with its carefully trimmed boxwoods and neat flower beds, is Manitou Gardens. There are plenty of city-owned playgrounds and swimming pools for youngsters. Of course, the adults also get in on the act. Just outside Spokane and overlooking the city is Indian Canyon, one of the most beautiful municipal golf courses in the country. It's plenty hilly though, and golfers welcome a ride up from the 18th green to the clubhouse in the self-service funicular. Spokane is surrounded by a dozen or more mountain lakes, offering boating, fishing, and swimming to summer visitors. Want to make an interesting one-day side trip from Spokane? Just step aboard an air-conditioned bus at the depot or in front of your hotel, and ride through the rolling wheat lands to Grand Coulee Dam, the largest man-made structure in all the world. Impounding the waters of the mighty Columbia River, Cooley Dam will develop more than two and a half million horsepower and will ultimately irrigate about a million and a quarter acres of fertile land. Historic times, the course of the Columbia was different, and it swept in a roaring cataract over the huge line of black cliffs that are now known as the Dry Falls. From Othello to Seattle, Tacoma, the railroad is again electrified. At Beverly, and still within the irrigation district of the Columbia Basin, the Olympian Hiawatha crosses the wide river. Early in the morning, your train begins climbing through the rocky tours of the heavily forested Cascade Mountains, with tall peaks shadowing the right of way. Approaching the summit, it passes beside the deep blue waters of Lake Ketchelis, cuts through two-mile-long Snoqualmie Tunnel, emerges on the west slope of the mountains, and swings on down to the Pacific Ocean. Going east or west, you see all of the Cascades by daylight. Down you go across the Cedar Falls watershed, through the suburbs of Black River and Renton, to the twin Pacific ports of Seattle and Tacoma, the end of your journey on the Superdome Olympian Hiawatha. This is Seattle, queen city of the Pacific Northwest, seaport for Alaska, Hawaii, and the Orient. It is the hub of a vacation land offering an almost endless variety of scenic attractions and outdoor activities. Well, how do you like it so far? Wonderful country, isn't it? I have a letter here that I'm sure will interest you. It's from a young man who let me help him plan a trip to the Pacific Northwest. He writes, We've had a grand time following the itinerary you worked out. The only complaint I have is that you really didn't tell us enough about all the attractions of Seattle, Tacoma, and the other places on Puget Sound. Guess you didn't have time. 
I'm enclosing a snapshot of my wife and me on one of the ferry docks. Andy goes on to tell me of some of the things they've been doing. Why don't we join them and see this part of the Pacific Northwest through their eyes? It's a simple piece of camera magic. Here they are. Mr. and Mrs. James A. Carter, Jim and Carol to us. Why don't we go up the gangplank with them for a cruise on the SS Sightseer? Open decks with plenty of benches and deck chairs are an invitation to relax in the sun while the sightseer backs out from its dock on Alaskan Way swings through Elliott Bay, past the shipyards, Smith Cove docks, Fort Lawton, and up Puget Sound. This young lady is giving the captain some instructions on the proper course to set. Entering the ship canal, you pass through locks, second in size only to those at Panama. A little further up the channel, our steamer meets a tugboat, pulling a big raft of cedar logs. <coughs> Perhaps it is heading for a shingle mill like this. On weekends, great fleets of small boats pass under this bridge. Here is Lake Union, where ocean freighters often lie at anchor. Your cruise ends on the opposite shore of 26 mile long Lake Washington, near Seattle's famed pontoon bridge, the largest of all floating structures. Back you go by bus through beautiful parks and residential districts. Seattle people are equally proud of the city's homes, its flowers, its varied trees and shrubs. And you can't blame them after you have seen their handsome town. The campus of the University of Washington, widely known for its husky athletic teams, is growing rapidly. Here is a new engineering building, one of many built since the end of the war. Seattle's farmer's market always enchants the ladies and is a wonderful place to shop. Perhaps you'll be most interested in the varied seafoods which delight gourmets. Sometimes those big Dungeness crabs are just a bit too fresh. If you're from an inland region, you'll be fascinated by Seattle's busy waterfront, which births ships from the seven seas. You'll see many flags and hear strange tongues spoken. Puget Sound, all the way from Olympia to Tacoma, Seattle, Anacortes, and on up to Vancouver, is a paradise for yachting enthusiasts. They start them young here and keep them on blue water all their lives. Plenty of boats can be chartered with or without crews if you'd like to go cruising for a while. You can try deep sea fishing for king and chinook salmon in anything from a rowboat to a sleek cruiser that can be chartered by the day or the week. The picturesque protected waters of Puget Sound are an ideal fishing ground. to Canada. The beautiful Princess Liners will take you in a few hours from Seattle across the Sound and the Strait of Juan de Fuca to the delightful city of Victoria in British Columbia. This is like going to England, 
but without the long Atlantic crossing. You'll like the pleasant atmosphere of Victoria, its beautiful harbor and fine public buildings. This is the Empress Hotel. Of course, you could take a taxi, but it's more fun to go sightseeing in a horse-drawn telly hall. One of the sights you won't want to miss is the famous Bouchard Gardens. Ample rainfall and a mild climate the year round help the skillful gardeners to bring a bewildering array of flowers into perfect bloom. Clipped hedges, evergreens, flowering shrubs, and quiet pools add their charm to the scene. Victoria is the capital of British Columbia, and the Provincial Assembly meets in the House of Parliament. The sailors may not be Scottish, and they may not enjoy the skirling of the pipes, but they obviously approve of the piper. There's a lot more to see. The golf club, the beach, the yacht basin. But the princess is waiting at the pier, and it's time we got back aboard for the beautiful trip up the island-dotted Straits of Georgia. Inlet, busy with commercial traffic of all kinds, we pass under the lofty span of Lionsgate Bridge. Vancouver is the largest city in western Canada, and its biggest hotel is half chateau, half skyscraper. Let's go right out to Stanley Park. Chances are the cricketers will be busy arguing about googly bowling, sticky wickets, and whether to stop for tea or draw the stumps and resume the match tomorrow. There'll also be cyclists, rugger games, tennis, hiking, golf, and milder pastimes like outdoor checkers. Bowling on the green is also popular. There's something that really takes a nice touch. Look at this shot, roll up the nudge the jack. A fine collection of totem poles shows you how the Northwest Indians depicted their family trees. Well, there's Lion's Gate again, the trademark of Vancouver, and we're headed back to Seattle. Gilded by sunset, the Peace Arch between Canada and Washington marks the western end of the world's longest unfortified border. Going back to Seattle, you'll go through Bellingham, a busy lumbering town. Perhaps see nearby Mount Baker. Then wind along Chuckanut Drive with its magnificent views of the Sound and the mountainous San Juan Islands. Shall we go over? A ferry from Anacortes will take you to Lopez Landing and then to Orcas Island, where many resorts are located. It's a beautiful trip, and you'll find the islands green and lovely, with quiet little towns and plenty of good salmon fishing. Life there may seem too secluded to you, but the islanders who leave rarely stay for long on the mainland. From the handsome stone lookout tower atop Mount Constitution in Moran State Park, you get a glorious panorama of the islands and sound. There's a lake, too, for boating, swimming, and fishing. But let's get back to Seattle and take another ferry trip. This time, we'll head across Puget Sound to Port Townsend for a tour of the Olympic Peninsula, a mountain, sea, and forest retreat.
it's quite a climb to the ranger station on Hurricane Ridge, but you'll be welcome there and rewarded with a wonderful view. You'll have to hike or take a pack trip if you want to get deep into the Olympic Mountains to scale the peaks or see the Blue Glacier. There are plenty of mountain lakes with excellent resort and cabin accommodations for visitors. This is Lake Crescent, backed by Storm King Mountain. You might try fishing for Beardsley or Crescent Trout or Thai Salmon. Indian guides will take you out in dugout canoes. This family party at Lake Quinault will probably work their way down to the rapids of the Quinault River. You can run through the fast water to the Pacific if you wish. At the little town of La Push, Quileut Indians still take their canoes miles out into the ocean. Tribes of the North Pacific coast were America's only maritime Indians. At potlatch festivals, pit crews of neighboring tribes race in dugouts hewn from single logs. There's a fishing fleet too at La Push, and the little boats go far into the Pacific for catches of salmon. Timber grows amazingly in the rain belt on the Olympic Peninsula. These sawyers are at work on a huge hemlock. And there it goes, crashing down with a shuddering roar. Speaking of lumber, Tacoma is the capital of this industry. The city is proud of its business, its schools and parks. Here is the new Narrows Bridge that saves a ferry trip going to Bremerton. Fort Nisqually in Point Defiance Park is a replica of the first structure in Tacoma and is well worth a visit. Not only for its historical interest, but for the beauty of its setting, overlooking the Narrows on one side, Commencement Bay on the other. The little cannon won't shoot anymore, but the stockade wall looks just like it did when the first settlers built it. and green forests in the background make every view a delight in this country. We don't promise anything, but you might find it worthwhile to drop a penny in the flower-encircled wishing well. From Tacoma or Seattle, you will surely visit Mount Rainier National Park, and the rangers at Longmire Springs will make you welcome. On the way up, the open-top coaches stop at Rick Secker Point for one of the finest views of Rainier. There it is, 14,408 feet of mountain crowned with this country's largest single-peak glacier system. Jutting up almost from sea level, nearly all of Rainier's kingly height is visible. Paradise Valley Inn and the nearby lodge are at the end of a wonderful mountain road and are the starting point for exploring the park. Easy paths lead through flower-filled alpine meadows. Here a walking party crosses above Myrtle Falls. Or you can do your climbing the lazy man's way on a sure-footed horse. Timberline, you'll get views like this of the Tatouche Range jutting through the mist. Here's a group getting ready for a longer hike up onto the glacier fields. There are plenty of guided tours, and the trails are marked if you prefer to strike out for yourself. The glaciers are slow moving rivers of ice crunching down the mountain. Snow water keeps Rainier's meadows green and feeds innumerable tumbling streams. Go high enough. And you can ski here even in midsummer. An ice cave is infinitely more colorful than the blue grotto of Capri.
the hardiest ones make a two-day trip of the climb to the very peak of Rainier with an overnight halt at Muir Camp. But you can see it all right from Paradise Valley, the mountain that was God to the Indians. you think? Wouldn't the Pacific Northwest be a good bet for your next vacation? Of course, there's a lot of it you haven't seen in this film, but you can easily get more detailed information by dropping in to see your Milwaukee Road ticket agent. Another thing you can do is look through a few vacation booklets. Here are some that cover Yellowstone Park, the Montana Rockies, and the entire Pacific Northwest vacation land. They're well illustrated, and give you plenty of information about the chief points of interest. Why don't you ask your nearest Milwaukee Road representative for a booklet on the area in which you were interested? Or write to Travel Department, the Milwaukee Road, Union Station, Chicago. They'll be glad to help you with your travel plans. On the old Milwaukee Road, on the old Milwaukee Road, traveling across the countryside, my oh my, what a wonderful ride when you hear that diner call, an invitation to you all. Wheels are clicking on the track, they'll take you there, bring you safely back on the old Milwaukee Road, on the old Milwaukee Road, all aboard. All 